Welcome to BBC World News. We start with the war in Ukraine because Western allies have agreed to put a cap on the price of Russian oil. The G7 group of nations, as well as Australia and the European Union, have decided that no country should pay more than $60 a barrel, slightly below the current price of $64. The US says it will immediately cut into Putin's most important source of revenue and stop Moscow profiteering from its war of aggression against Ukraine. Louisa Pilbeam reports. The latest Russian missile strike in Kharkiv. More destruction and suffering in a war that is showing no sign of ending. But a move by the G7, the world's seven largest advanced economies, Australia and the European Union, to cap the price of Russian oil is hoped to bring an end to this war closer. They've agreed to restrict the price of Russian oil at $60 a barrel, hoping to wound Russia with another financial sanction. This price cap has three objectives. First, it strengthens the effect of our sanction. Second, it will further diminish Russia's revenues. And thirdly, at the same time, it will stabilize global energy markets. The limit will come in on Monday, after the EU persuaded Poland to back the plan after Warsaw initially considered it too high. And some market experts believe it's more of a symbol of rebellion against the Kremlin than a realistic financial weapon. They want one measure in place to suddenly contribute to that discount being bigger, uh, but not as large as some wanted. And I think that the fact that it's taken the EU so long to agree on a cap uh, is because some countries, which tend to be more hawkish on Russia, wanted that cap to be much lower. Other experts say sanctions like this are hurting Russia, but President Vladimir Putin is still making huge amounts of money through oil. There are going to be a lot of different ways that people could skirt around uh, this price cap. And <clears throat> obviously the Russians will do everything they can to make sure that that happens. Although $60 isn't a bad price at the moment, um, they could do other things. They could cut back on oil production so that that prices go higher, but then that wouldn't be so good for countries like India, for instance, which has now become Russia's number one purchaser of oil. The Kremlin denounced the scheme, saying it would not supply those countries which enforced a price cap. Before the war, more than half of Russia's oil exports went to Europe. But Russia has found new markets in India and China and new money to fund its war. Louisa Pilbeam, BBC News. Well, let's go live to Kiev now and our correspondent Jessica Parker, who is there for us. I suppose the big question then, uh, Jessica, is will this have any impact on Russia? Yeah, of course. And I think as we've just been hearing in that report, there are a lot of questions about exactly how this price cap is going to work and how effective it is going to be. And certainly in terms of reaction here in Kiev overnight uh, from the president's office, President Zelensky's office, one of the things they're saying is it would be necessary to reduce to $30 per barrel in order to quickly destroy, as they put it, the enemy's economy. So I think a slightly lukewarm response there from the government in Kyiv in terms of how they see this cap. Of course, it's designed to limit Russian revenues in terms of its a sale of oil in order to then limit its ability to finance its war in Ukraine. I think from Ukraine's perspective, they always want these Western allies to go further and faster. And it's taken, of course, a while to get here. The EU wrangling up until the last moment over which limits to set the cap at. And this rather familiar battle, actually, where you have countries like Poland, Baltic states as well, really wanting to go harder and faster to hit Russia's economy more strongly versus maybe a more cautious approach by some other countries further to the West. But I think it will be seen as a, a step forward. But as you say, all eyes will be on whether it really does that much to limit Russian revenues and limit Russia's ability to carry out this ongoing war, which continues to take lives and affect people's lives across the whole country. Russia, in response, is saying that it's not going to supply those um, countries which try to um, stick to the cap. And there are differing levels, aren't there, of exposure on that front across Europe? Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> I mean, the way this cap is going to work, we're told, is that we'll basically stop shipping and insurance firms under kind of G7 control from selling uh, Russian oil above this $60 cap. And what we're hearing from the likes of Washington 
is that they have a big dominance of this market in terms of the G7 and therefore they think it will be uh, very effective. Russia making this statement overnight in terms of how it will react, you wouldn't expect them to be particularly pleased about any efforts to limit its, uh, Russia, its oil revenues. Of course, it's all timed as well with this ban on seaborne oil into the European Union. Now, that was wrangled over for a long time as well, and there were certain exemptions for pipeline oil to some landlocked countries within the EU. And again and again, what you see, whether it's gas, whether it's oil, this issue of energy supplies is a really crucial one because large parts of the world have been heavily reliant on Russian fossil fuels for many, many years. And following the Russian invasion, there was suddenly this moment where lots of countries thought, Russia's making a lot of money out of things that we're buying from them. How do we tackle this? But there was a nervousness of just cutting supplies off, of course, because of the impact it would have on the global economy, which is why you sometimes see these compromise deals coming, whether it's on gas or whether it's on oil imports as well. And just briefly, um, Jessica, just talk to us very uh, briefly about the situation in Kyiv at the moment with the power outages, because that is the huge concern at the moment there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, as you can see, it's windy. It's pretty cold here as well. Temperature's going to keep dropping. We're hearing emergency power outages continuing in the capital uh, today. They've been trying to stabilise the energy grid after attacks Wednesday before last uh, on large parts of Ukraine's energy infrastructure. Kyiv, it seems, particularly badly hit, but power outages continuing for businesses, for families as well. I've got to say, a lot of people you speak to are very resilient about the whole thing, saying that they'll find ways around it. But it is going to be an extremely tough winter, and we don't know, of course, whether Russia will try and further uh, destabilise and attack Ukraine's energy grid again. That has been the expectation. President Zelensky has said as much. Thank you very much. Jessica Parker for us there in Kyiv.